Hi, right, welcome back to Shaving with Fuzzy. I'm Fuzzy. Hi, y'all. On Wednesday morning, which means da -da -da, we're going to get Williams Wednesday on Wednesday. All right, so there we go. So that's the plan anyway. All right, so we're going to use a vintage Williams in the scuttle. I don't know if I used that last time or not. Things how even the new stuff is going to be vintage stuff since they quit making it. I've just been using what I grab. I used to try to be sure I mixed it up really good with newer stuff, older stuff. And I guess I should still do that. But anyway, this is what we're going to do today because it's the first thing I grabbed off the shelf. And it'll work. So we got our Spog 1305 brush. Our favorite little 1912. And for people who've been asking, this one came out of a World War II military. They called it a G3. Got the little plastic case that slides open and close. And uh, some of them have metal handles. Some of them have these uh, uh, Bakelite handles. I like the one with the Bakelite handle the best. Treat braid. Uh, we're going to finish off with Aquavella, which makes this a signature shave for Wednesday. It's also uh, supervisor meeting day. We all know how much we love those, right? Even when everything is really good, we don't really love those. And everything's not bad. Everything is not bad at all. I think it'll be a fairly typical, fairly typical meeting. We're a pretty, uh, we all get along pretty good. So I think it'll be all right. So I got up a little early and I'm already taking the dogs out for walking. It's hot. That's why the hair looks like this. And I haven't gotten a shower yet. But what I'm going to do, though, is when I do get a shower, I'm going to continue the Williams Wednesday by using ivory soap. Because in case you didn't know, ivory soap was originally J.B. Williams' product that he sold to concentrate on making his shave soap. That's my understanding. Ivory was originally part of the J.B. Williams because, you know, they invented it. Whatever. And then I think they sold it to Palmolive, if I remember correctly. Something along those lines. Don't exactly quote me on that but uh that's kind of what happened but anyway we'll get a little going here so someone had asked the other day about the big old elbow scar there and it's not a really hugely engrossing story um when i was in like sixth grade i guess i had an uncle a great uncle my dad's uncle bob and he was a gun guy, lived in Beaumont, Texas, and he was a really smart guy, and uh, by the time I knew him, he I guess he'd retired, and he was taking care of his mother, who was my dad's grandmother, or great-grandmother, or aunt, 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 that's what it is. Yeah, that's what it would have been, it would have been one of his aunts, but that was his uncle. It would have been a great, anyway, look. So, uh, yeah, it was, he was taking care of his mom, which would have been my dad's grandma. Okay, so there we go. And uh, But he was a gun guy. And he had uh, he had built a room in his house. It had the big heavy door on it and everything. He was a, a gun guy. Now, this would have been back in the, what, mid, upper 70s. Yeah. So, anyway. Uh, went out to the gun range one time with Dad, he and uh, I went, and I can't remember who all was with us. I imagine Marvin was with us, my brother. But anyway, uh, we got out to the range, and he was showing me how to shoot a pistol. And I was having a blast, but he kept getting on me about straightening out my arm so that we could get it, because you, you straighten your arm out in a good in a good stance, and you get, and that's a really nice, uh, stable stance so you can hold everything and I couldn't straighten my arm out and it wouldn't do it still won't do it as you just saw but anyway so we got back home I don't remember if we were there for I don't remember what we were there we were there visiting or something but anyway we got back home and uh I had a doctor's appointment already for something else so while I was there he looked at my arm 
took an x-ray and he comes back in the room and says, hey, when'd you break your arm? I didn't break my arm. I didn't broke my arm at all. I said, yeah, he did. So when'd you break your arm? Come to find out, somewhere along the line, and still to this day, don't know where or when exactly, I had dislocated my elbow. Dislocated the radial head. Now you got two bones in the forearm and the radial bone, the one that's got the radial head up here, goes to the wrist right here and it's used for rotating your wrist. I guess that's why they call it radial. They said, well, you know, we need to do surgery. Put it back in place. We'll pin it. It'll be good. So, that was the first surgery I ever had. Can't tell you a whole lot about it. But uh, what they found out once they actually got me cut open, that was the first time that scar was open, uh, was that there was no way to repair it. It had been out for so long and had so much damage to the joint. So it had basically been out and then it was just grinding away on that joint. And I couldn't do a whole lot because I was still growing. I was like sixth grade, still a young man. Hmm, double O Devin gonna be mad at me on not answering his calls. But anyway, uh, So they couldn't do anything, so they sewed it back up, and I bounced along for a lot of years. And, you know, there's some pain involved with a joint like that. It kept grinding away. You could hear it in a quiet room. I could roll that elbow over, and you could hear it grinding like gravel all the way across the room. Everybody would cringe. I used to think it was the neatest thing. But anyway, when I came out of high school in Louisiana, we were in a Moss Bluff, Louisiana at the time, as a matter of fact. Nice little place if you've never been there. It's not the same as it was when I was there, but it's probably still pretty nice. They did another surgery, and what they found was that uh, the bad joint with that bone floating around and beating around was grinding away the good joint. There's two joints at the end of the big bone from the shoulder down there. And uh, it was destroying and tearing up. There was a lot of damage to that. So what they did was they lopped the end of that bone off, the radial head, they cut it out. That shortened up this bone, so it leaves my wrist to where I got a lot of slack in my wrist sometimes. My shoulder hurts most of the time. But apparently whatever I did to my uh, elbow, also damaged the shoulder. Now, I don't know. We were being pretty rough on the playground about that time. We had found this nice little game called murder football. We broke a leg or two that year, I recall. Well, we broke a leg, and then I think the uh, playground, one of the rides, broke a leg. We broke two legs that year. Maybe I broke my arm. I don't know. Never, never have known for sure what happened. Never will. So that's two surgeries worth. Now the funny thing is, when I lived in Arizona, my boss's wife, who was also the boss, they own the company, so the, the lady boss, uh, let's just brush out a little bit, had had her radio head cut out for whatever reason. And she had a scar about that long. But on me, it didn't work that way. I don't know what the deal was. Of course, she'd had hers done a lot of years after I had mine done. I still don't think they actually removed hers. I think that it's just some kind of repair surgery. and uh, But I can't remember now for sure if it was actually removed or if it was just a repair surgery. Okay, that's Witch Hazel we just put on. For folks who don't know, Fuzzy likes Witch Hazel for his cleanup pass. But anyway, that's the story of the elbow, elbow scars. And I was just complaining yesterday that my shoulder was aching. When the weather changes, I know about what rain coming usually before most people because my arm starts aching. That's actually a thing. You can tell from injuries like that when the weather's changing and stuff.
There we go. Signature, Williams Wednesday Shave. With the old favorite 1912. I'm going to finish up with a little aqua velma. Aqua velma. Ice blue. Always a favorite, although there's nothing long wrong with the musk. But today it is. And this is a glass bottle, by the way. I actually have. So this bottle, I refill. I, I go and buy, because you know you can only get the plastic these days. I go and buy the plastic bottle and I refill the glass bottle. But I actually have right here, where nobody will mess with it. Let me get it out of here. An open glass bottle of Lacro Bell. Never been open that I'm aware of. And I know it's never been used. But anyway, I thought that was kind of neat. So there we go. So that's the shave for today. And a little storytelling. The mystery of the scar. Now, a much more interesting story is the mystery of the scar on the head up here. But anyway, that's for another day. Y'all have a great day. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, wish me luck in the supervisor's meeting. No, it ain't going to be that big a deal. Happy shaves to you.